Creek, which crosses through Brooklyn and Queens, is one of the most polluted waterways in the nation. So what's being done to clean up the creek? Newtown Creek is a tributary of the East River and it's heavily polluted because it has a very long history of being an industrial waterway and it continues to be a working waterway today. This is Jesse Miller. He is an environmental science student extraordinaire at LaGuardia Community College. Willis Elkins from the Newtown Creek Alliance and the North Brooklyn Boat Club and he's a collaborator with LaGuardia Community College and we are on our way to Dutch Kills which is a little inlet that's behind LaGuardia Community College. Gotta watch our head going through here. So we're going to look at the amount of dissolved oxygen and the you limit can leave, you can leave it for the water to be yeah, we'll just drag something that, that organisms can safely live in is three milligrams per liter. So At about four to five process. milligrams per liter, they start getting really stressed and have trouble with growth and reproduction. It is 0.9 milligrams per liter. Wow, yeah, that's surprising. That's actually really low, especially for surface. Let's see what it is as we yeah. go out further. There was a major oil spill in 1978 that deposited a great deal of oil in the bottom sediments, which continues to be an issue for the aquatic organisms. The EPA designated the creek a Superfund site. What that means is that the responsible parties have to pay into a fund that will help clean up the creek. One of the other major pollution issues here is the CSOs. Those are the combined sewage overflow pipes, and there are a number of them in Newtown Creek. On the back wall, that, that's the CSO we mentioned, known as BB026 is the formal name of it. So it's the fourth largest CSO in Newtown Creek, and it's something like over 200 million gallons a year of sewage and stormwater that come out of there. When we have major rainfall events, the water treatment plants can't handle the amount of water that's coming to them, so some of that will go directly into our natural waterways. You're adding fecal bacteria, enterococcus, to the water. You're adding trash to the water, chemicals, nutrients. And what happens is a number of organisms, such as phytoplankton, what we think of as algae, they will live off those nutrients and they'll multiply massively. So they'll block out the light that everyone else needs to live. And when they die and decompose on the bottom, the de decomposition process takes the oxygen away from everything else. Chunk Creek is actually very narrow. And due to that, the sewage that comes in through these pipes is more likely to stay and settle in the sediments than it is to be flushed out with the tides. 3.23, much better. But you see the difference as we came out where you get some kind of flow. The EPA deems water inaccessible for recreational uses if it's above a certain level of enterococcus. And that's actually what we test for on a weekly basis. And we'll be able to use this in conjunction with what the EPA has collected in order to look at what the levels of sewage indication are, what the levels of enterococcus are um, over a long period of time. And then they will go ahead with a cleanup of the creek. One of the reasons we started doing research at Newtown Creek and doing water quality testing with the local organizations like Newtown Creek Alliance, like North Brooklyn Boat Club, like Harbor Lab, was to get the students out into their community and to let them see how much biodiversity is in their backyard. I had a student come down and look and say, there's a sea anemone there. I see crabs, I see cone jellies, I see fish, and they were shocked. They never expected to see anything like this in Newtown Creek. They thought it was just a smelly, ugly body of water. One of the things that Newtown Creek Alliance is, is working on with us is the idea of turning some of this area into, into 
something that's more accessible for the public. There's really, there's only two legitimate access points. One was the nature walk and the other is like at the mouth of the creek. So for all of the Queen Shore and all the spots back in the creek, there's no place where people are encouraged to get to the water. It's been a big issue because it's also, if no one can get to it or see it, then no one's going to care about it or have any connection mm -hmm. to the water itself. These guys have carved out their own little spot up here where they have the chairs <laughs> and they have a kayak. You know, it's just guys that are working at this facility. So, you know, even though it's not the cleanest water, people are still drawn towards getting access to it. So, Dutch Kills has a lot of potential in the future of both restoration environmentally, but also in terms of access because you have all these schools that are near the, the end of it, uh, all these bridges and a lot of businesses. So there's a lot of potential to create more access to this waterway. Definitely the water is improving. Um, people are becoming more cognizant. The people that live in the neighborhood keep an eye out for industries dumping into the creek. And we've actually um, found a number of people dumping into the creek, flagged them, and reported them to the DEC. And that's really helped. Just the citizen kind of watch has helped a great deal. We're also involved in a number of projects on bioremediation. For example, we're working with the Newtown Creek Alliance to establish cages of rib mussels. And rib mussels are natural filter feeders. They naturally filter the water. This is the Intertidal Wetlands Project from LaGuardia Community College. And this is Professor Sarah Duran's project. And you can see that the grasses here, they're all native grasses from Newtown Creek. They provide a habitat for mussels, for a lot of other organisms. They're part of the whole ecosystem. I think one of the most important things is to get our next generation out here, get them interested in our local waterways, see where the water that gets cleaned and we depend on for life comes from. And one of the best ways to do that is to bring them out of the classroom, get them out on our waterways on a canoe, get them collecting water samples and testing it, seeing what's in there, seeing the organisms, and get them to love it as much as we do.